I'm Sloan. I'm 15 years old, and I bet I know more about the NBA than you do. This is Sloan Notes. On today's episode, this power forward won both Rookie of the Year and MVP in 2008, nicknamed Ace. She's a two-time WNBA champion and is considered one of the greatest players of all time. These days, you can catch her talking NBA on TNT and also balling out on the Las Vegas Aces. Today on Slow Nose, it's Candace Parker. Okay, so Candace, I want to start off with this. So you know, like tennis mixed doubles. Yeah. What is your dream NBA WNBA mixed doubles team? You oh and someone goodness. versus two people. Oh my gosh, I've always been in awe of the skill set of Kevin Durant. I just feel like ever since, I mean, we've kind of, we're two or three years apart Mm -hmm. and just watching his skill set, watching how he gets to his spots, watching that he's like seven foot and plays like a guard. So I think our, our mix double would be. And who are you guys going against? I mean, we anybody at anybody. that point. Oh, yeah. That is true. That's <laughs> at that a hard point, anybody. That's a hard joke. <laughs> it's funny because I was thinking about the answer to this question earlier, and I was going to pair you with Katie, like not even knowing that you were a really? fan. I just felt like so we the here. two of you really like work out. I just, mm. I really can feel that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It. I mean, just watching him on the court, um, is he can get to his spots, and he yeah. literally has zero weaknesses. There's moves that you know he's going to do, and you can't stop it. So Crazy. I definitely want that on my. His team. only weakness is his shoe size. I guess. Uh, yeah, because he yeah stepped on the line. That was True. unfortunate. But True. other than that, other good than point. that, he, he's all good. <laughs> okay, so I'm 15, and I'm a freshman in high school. I think when you were 15, you were a sophomore, but that's okay. Let's just pretend like we were, <laughs> you're like going back to when you were my age. We don't. We can. Take away the grade part. I want to know everything about you when you were 15. Like, what was your personality like? Because you were, I mean, most 15-year-olds weren't as talented as you were when you were 15, which is pretty crazy. So I, I want to hear what that was like. When I was 15, I, at that point, I was all about basketball. Yeah. So um, everything in my life, somehow basketball had to fit into that. So I, I still went to the movies. I still went to the mall. But it was based off of my basketball yeah. schedule. Um, I had braces. I had acne. What color were your braces? Oh my gosh. Pick one. I had pink one day. I Mm -hmm. do the orange bands. Yeah. But like orange makes it look like you have food in your teeth. It's true. And I didn't realize that until afterwards. And don't get white Mm -hmm. because it makes your teeth look yellow. Yellow. Mm -hmm. I learned that lesson. I also learned that. Um, There's like a guy on TikTok who like gives all the pros and cons of every single braces color. I'm like, I, mean, I sort of like him. Like, I'm, I like I like listening. It's very I'm, helpful. I'm learning that. And mm-hmm. then I had to go through that with my daughter when she got her braces and, like, trying to help her out. And there's sometimes she listened. And sometimes, sometimes yeah. yeah, she had to learn on her own. But, mm-hmm. yeah, braces. My mom tried to make me wear a mouth guard. Um, mm-hmm. And I was like, that's not cool. I can't no, do it. No. Uh, yeah, everything basketball at this point. Um, but I would say I, I went to dances and things like that. Again, I would go to a dance. And the next day I would go straight to my tournament. Um yeah, so I think I was just like a normal kid. I loved my favorite shows were Sister Sister. A normal kid who like was really really, really good at basketball. <laughs> like that's not that normal, but I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. But like you know, I came home and watched. Uh, it was our thing was TGI Friday, so that was a uh, TGIF was like okay. the lineup. So I'd watch like Sister Sister. I don't I'd know watch, what any of that is. Oh, wow, Family Matters. No. Mm mm. Step by step. Mm mm. Wow. Zero clue. Yeah. I gotta talk to your parents. Yeah. They, we gotta get these we gotta get these old school TV shows back in the I, I don't even really watch TV. Like I just watch TikTok. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. Sad, okay. Right? Well, I watch television and that was uh that those are the shows. Okay, so Full House. You know oh, Full I know House. Full House. Okay. I know, well, I know Full House because of Fuller House. Oh though. gosh. But no, I know I know Full House. I know okay. Full House. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Lonzo Ball was on Full House. Fuller House. That, yes. that wouldn't make sense. It was to be Fuller. On Full House. Oh, on yeah, Fuller yeah, yeah. Okay, House. parents. Yeah. We gotta get we they gotta did get a fine on. job. At least I know what Full House is. Listen, I'm very I'm very proud of yeah. you for knowing what Fuller House Thank is. You. I'm also pretty sure that like the like Steve guy on the show, that's a person. He right? was there. He's like a foot doctor for like He's supposed to be like a foot doctor for the Lakers. Really? Like I think that that's supposed to be his job. Yeah. Or maybe well that would be weird because he lives in San Francisco, so that would be like weird. Maybe you traveled. Yeah, maybe. maybe. I yeah. respect the grind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you were fifteen, you were older than the WNBA, which is a sort of a weird concept to think about. Because of that, was your dream still to play in the WNBA or do you think you wanted to more go overseas or because of the lack of maybe representation, you were like, maybe I have to pick a different pr- profession. So at 11 is when the WNBA started, when I was 11 years old. Um, in 1997 is the inaugural season of the WNBA. 
And it was right around that time when I fell in love with basketball. Up until then, I wanted to be Mia Hamm. I wanted to be a soccer player. That's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I was going to be an Olympic soccer player. And my parents literally crushed my dreams because they told me I was going to be 6'2", and there were no 6'2 soccer players. Now you look and you're like, I would have been pretty okay. Yeah. But anyway, so I kind of shifted my mindset to basketball. And it was right around that time, too, my brother got drafted into the NBA. And so I think from that point on, I just fell in love with watching women's basketball players. I grew up in the city um, in Naperville and grew up watching the Chicago Bulls play. And so it was kind of cool to go from Michael Jordan to then Cynthia Cooper and Cheryl Swoops and uh, to, to see myself in them. Yeah. And, um, and so I think at, you know, 11 through 18 years old, it was really like seeing the growth and the potential of women's sports. But I was the kind that was like, you were not going to tell me what I couldn't do. Mm-hmm. And so I just, I I knew I wanted to play in the WNBA. Yeah, that's awesome. So I know, of course, like the infamous dunk contest, like where, you know, you beat J.R. Smith and all them. But I want to know, like, not in like a McDonald's All-American game. Was there any times where like in a high school game or anything like that, that you played against future WNBA stars that you look back at that and you're like, now we're playing on, of course, the biggest stage. We would do these like pickup runs at DePaul University. Uh And I remember some of the WNBA players would come back and play in those runs. Some that had been in the league, some that, you know, had played before. And and then again, you know, going to USA and going to, uh, where is it? Denver is where the, or Colorado Springs is where the training facility is. And playing against the greatest competition at my age group. And then some of the older players would come back and play against us. And so I think that's where I started kind of measuring my skills and we didn't have YouTube so I could look and see what the greatest, you know, 10th grader is. But really it was just like, we would go to tournaments and I would watch games Mm -hmm. and I'm the most competitive person and I wanted to be the best. Um, And I I do remember, this is a, (laughs) I remember in eighth grade, I um, was talking to my coach and my coach was like, you know, you could be number one in the state. And I got mad. I was like, the state? Country. Like I want to be the, you know? And that's just, how it always was when I was yeah. a kid. Our our household's so competitive. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think every and time. Be, I mean, your brother's in that. Yeah, you have to be better than him. It was just, yeah. And all across the board, we're just competitive as a family. And so, you know, I think once I got to the point where I was playing against other WNBA players, I was really like measuring my skills. Like, okay, I have to yeah. get better at this. I got to, I got to get to my jump shot quicker. Um, but it was just a way to, yeah, yeah, test myself. The crazy thing about now is like, I don't know if you've seen, but on the House of Highlights, there's like third graders mixtapes and like that's the weirdest thing to me like you know they're like top second grader in the country like come on there's no way that's like a real thing I I just that's crazy I think it's crazy now because of the amount of pressure I would say yeah and also these highlight tapes are the best that you the best plays that you've ever made so then when people come and see you they're judging yourself they're judging you against your best play plays Uh so then Of course, they're going to see you and be like, oh, you're not all that. But it's literally the best that you've ever done on these mixtapes. Okay. So now we heard about you when you were 15. You sounded cool. I feel like we'd be friends. Yeah, of course. Okay. Of course. Especially like you losing your nail and Yeah, all that stuff. No, it's like- You seem competitive. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, You don't- Exactly. So we would have been friends for sure. Especially with my brother. Yep. It's not healthy. Board games? You flip some board Board games? games. Yeah. Mm, More, more, even more extreme. Okay. He's- Maybe been sent to the hospital by me. Really? I, yeah, it's, it gets a okay, little. Okay, so exactly. Over, like, we're in the same iPads, like same boat. Or like so, my brother's a big Panthers fan. Oh, sorry, which is like gross and weird. Yeah, I'm sorry. For, in like the first place, like why? I'm a Bears fan, so I can relate. It's but. also just like Panthers, weird. Okay. Yeah. And I will purposely root against them. Like I don't. I like literally <laughs> don't care. I'll just be like they'll be playing the Rams, and I will be like I will not stop talking about the Rams. Like and, and he gets so mad, and I like to see that. But then here's the thing. So I'm a big Warriors fan. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good That's timing. a little better than the Panthers. Yeah, yeah. And for some weird reason, my brother is now, like, likes the Hornets. But, like, I don't believe him. Like, he's just a liar. He just likes to, like, go against negate you. what I'm saying. I mean, that's a pretty tough That's team just, to pick yeah, to it's go just against weird. you. I mean, like, I get it. Kelly Bridge Jr. Win. Jr. and Lamella, like, I get that. But, yeah, like, but other still, than that, it's, like, it's weird. Pretty tough. And so now he can do it back on me, and I'm pissed. Like, we'll be watching. But he really with, can't. But he cause... can't, though. That's, that's – okay, <laughs> there. That's the thing, though. That's the thing, though. Because like, like, you're still winning. Well, I don't know. The Warriors mm, – I mean, they're, like, mm, two games out of 
like, I know, fourth but place. like, no, so they'll yeah, be right. they're in ninth right now. But like, but still, they're two games out of that's like, true. Fourth that, place. That's true. And but fourth okay, place. but like the West is so weird right now that like you win a game and you go from like six, you go from like ninth to six. That's why everybody's like, talking crazy. about the Clippers right now, and I'm like, they're fine. Like, oh yeah, me, the Clippers are fine. I think they're in fifth right now, but then like a but week ago they're like in. It's, but they're one game from being like. For, I know it's all it's all crazy. Okay, so we talked about you in your 15, and now let's let's go into now. Okay. I think you we done? don't have to say the age. We could just yeah, we don't we it. don't need to clarify yeah. the age, just later in life. Yes. How about is that, is that a good That's way good. to say it? Season. Okay, great. Yep. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay. So what is the most memorable play of your career and what is the most memorable call of your career? My gosh, play of my career. Am I taking you back here? Yeah, you're taking me back. The most memorable play of my career was probably that is a really good question. Hmm. My most memorable play, I would say, would be our, the hardest thing I've ever had to do as a group, as a unit, as a teammate, is win a WNBA championship. That was like one thing that did not come easy. It was like a grind. And we were up 10, blew the lead. Like we, we were up 10 with like three minutes left, blew the lead. Minnesota takes the lead by one. Maya hits a shot. We come down. And what's crazy is we say the most beautiful play or most memorable play. I wasn't even involved in the play. Mm -hmm. I was watching it. And it was like, but it's nice you know, to see. Yeah. Chelsea came down, missed the shot. NECA got the rebound. And I saw her putting it back. Mm -hmm. And it was like literally your hopes and dreams hang in the balance of whether the shot goes in or not. Mm -hmm. And it luckily went in off an offensive rebound. And they didn't have any timeouts left, shot it from half court and missed it. and. We That's won our insane. first WBA championship. Yeah. And so I think the most memorable play is cool because I wasn't I wasn't a part of it. Well, but, you were, but in a in a different way. Yes. Yeah. But it was like one of those moments that I still remember how I felt, what I felt, what was going through my yeah. mind. It was crazy. That's so cool. Okay, now call. Because this is like probably a, like, is it your first call? Or like, do you remember specifically like something where you were just like, that line eight, like that was so cool. A no. call? Like, yeah. what do you mean? Like, did you ever like? Okay, you're like calling a game. Okay, oh, you, like, call talking? on a, a game. Call. Yes, yes, no, yes. Not a phone okay. call. I got you. Yeah. I was like really confused. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I, I have got to you. clarify. No, you're more. fine. You're Actually, fine. Actually, what was the best phone call of your life? I mean, was there something was what, what? I don't know. Barack Obama called us after we won the oh, championship. That's it was okay, by the way, so you could answer that question. I don't know why I'm being judged for that question. If that was the question, it was kind of cool. That was Barack. Um, so I think the best was. I mean, I'm I'm a Warriors fan too. So well, actually, a lot of people are called Warriors Phoenix game, mm. and Clay Thompson and Devin Booker got into it. Oh yeah, that was and that mm, call that was, was so chippy. fun, just because you see like the competitiveness. You see, you know, the Warriors dynasty and Phoenix being up and coming, and you see the back and forth. And so to call it with Reggie Miller and Kevin Harlan, and to be in that environment. I mean, I'm such a fan of the game, so I feel like I don't want to tell you know, I don't want to tell you know Turner that. They're literally like, I would be doing this anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's not tell them that. Such a weird thing about sports is that as fans, we root for people to not like each other. Like, mm -hmm. that's such like a, that goes against like, I mean, that's what all human fan, things. Yeah. And then like, as a fan, like you love to see, like, I love watching Dylan Brooks try to get in the head of all the Warriors because he yeah. just, he, he tries so hard and he can't do it. And I love watching them hate Dylan Brooks and that's mm -hmm. such like a weird thing that like if I said that about anyone else that would be so weird but no, then it's, it's like acceptable in that so I like to say like you know of course the question is like what was your welcome to the league moment whatever mm -hmm. but I, I you were drafted to the Sparks which is pretty cool it's not like you were drafted to no offense to any other cities but it's yep. not like you know that's a pretty LA is a pretty cool place to be drafted exactly. so instead of what was your welcome to the league moment what was your welcome to LA moment because when you come here you get to like you know there's like celebrities pulling up to yep. your games like that's that's so cool I think the welcome to LA moment was I mean Magic Johnson is Magic Johnson yeah. so being able to like meet him I think was surreal that's pretty um special. yeah it really was. Mm -hmm. It was one of those like childhood, oh my gosh, I can't believe. Mm -hmm. Like little Candace would have been insane. Yes. Insane. Yeah. So I think that that was kind of the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I think the welcome to basketball moment, I got to meet Michael Jordan when I was um, like eight or nine years old. Wow. My brother worked his camp. Uh -huh. And that was like my like welcome to basketball yeah. moment. 
where that's like you're like I, it was like I there's this, this like aura to. that surrounds him yeah and I can't even He's explain like a it God. That's but it's just like he just walks around and it's just like everything he does you're like oh mm-hmm. my gosh like this mm-hmm. dude is just the goat like the greatest that there ever yeah. were there ever was there ever will be so that I wonder my, if he was like a future goat is talking to me right now. You listen, guys, you know, I, as, <laughs> as competitive as he is, I don't think so. I don't think he's thinking of anybody else being a goat. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. Uh, you never maybe, know. You never maybe. know. Maybe like the like basketball gods were talking to him. Maybe. Like, you want to you wanna talk to this little hey, girl. Hey, listen, you know? I'm all for it. Hopefully, you know, MJ, if you'd like to be on the show, I can ask you that question. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. So this is probably my favorite segment here. So it's takes hotter than Kelly Oubre Jr., which is hard right? There isn't many takes that are harder than him. So it's like, we really got to go like deep into this. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, like these takes have to have like beautiful green eyes. Okay. Beautiful. Like okay. that bleach blonde hair. Yep. They have to be harder than the tsunami poppy. Like that's hard, but I think we can do it. I tsunami really do. I, I have confidence in the two of us that we'll be able to do that. So they're going to get pretty hot. And it's already hot in here. We don't uh, want to get You sound like my nieces. This is crazy. I mean, okay. come on. He's Kelly. I mean, like, he's like he, way younger than me. So I he's, just, he's a like, beautiful <laughs> specimen of a okay, man for sure. Okay. I'm with you. And just if anyone is like a Suns fan out there, it could also be takes harder than Devin Booker. I had a conversation with someone about that the other day. Like that works as well. Okay. But I'm going to go with Kelly because he's my guy. Okay. So, and if Kelly, if, you know, if you want to be on the show too, you're welcome to. Um, anyway, so um, which... WNBA player is the best dressed. And you're allowed to say yourself because, like, you're pretty good. I'm not. I mean, I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say that's a really good question. You're giving Um, me credit for a question that really isn't that. No, that's a good question, though. Like, who's the best dressed? I mean, I would say Kalia Copper. Mm -hmm. Like, Ka comes with it. And it's like she has a versatile style Mm. and she plays with, like, I love playing with like feminine and masculine and like mm-hmm. the intersection and like wearing heels and wearing, you know, a dress and then wearing like a suit and then yeah. wearing nothing under That's it. And so just cool. like, I love like seeing what she's going to wear to game. So I would say Ka. Yeah. What's like when you walk through the tunnel and you see people taking pictures of you, like what do you think is going through their head? Like, I wanna know. So here's my thing. I have never been the one to pose mm. ever. Okay. And my stylist gets so upset at me yeah, because you, why, yeah, I don't pose because I'm off. like in game mode. And so- It's just one of those things where even if you look, like I went to dinner with some of my friends last night and there were some people there taking pictures and I never have, you can, you can give yourself the pop. I never, I never, like I never have, cause I'm always like, Mm -hmm. like I'm always like, no, the poses are always, yeah. Cause when you're walking, but then like, I feel like at least for me, like I hate when people take pictures of me walking. I have to be like in my element. Cause when I'm in my element, like it's fine. Yes. Well, maybe we need to have a session because for me, I just, I'm like, I'm always me and I always make crazy facial expressions. Mm -hmm. So those are the pictures that they capture. Mm -hmm. And so then it's like, that's mm -hmm. how it is. Yeah. Like I posted a picture today of me and my wife walking in and I'm like, and and she's like in full pose mode Mm -hmm. and you know, I'm, I jack up the picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got it. It's okay. It's okay. We can we can like work on that, especially for TikTok too. Like, <laughs> oh all gosh, your my daughter gets so upset at me with TikTok. She's like, "Mom, stop, focus." Okay, well, I'm gonna be like your daughter in like thir- thirty minutes, so oh, you, you have to get ready. Yeah, I know you have oh, to go okay. into mom mode. So. Okay, be excited, be excited. <laughs> but we we got to keep going with the hot takes because they're they're not hotter than Kelly so far. Mm, tough, but um, which NBA player would be the best? actor or who who is the best actor because you know we've we've seen some little cameos here and there so i just did a commercial with steph i think steph is great because he's himself Was it for Karma? yes mm. i just did a karma good Karma-X. job even knowing you know. for, yeah but like steph's pretty good because he's just himself all the time so he has that like mm. raspy voice and he's it's just like, like uh, i gotta be honest know. like i love him more than anything in the world right like he's my like lock screen whatever i his acting is slightly monotone Yes, but it's him. But it's okay. Okay. Maybe so it's one of those things where, yeah. you know how there's some actors that just play themselves yes. in every movie? Like Vince Vaughn. I mm-hmm. feel like that's how he yeah. is in real life. Yeah. I don't know who Vince Vaughn is. Is that awkward? Oh. But it's fine. I, I'm just going to pretend like I agree. Wedding Crashers? No. Oh, mm-hmm. my gosh. Yeah, the breakup. Yeah. No, 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 no. If you could compare yourself to a female soccer player, like Dude, your playing style, who you don't know be? who Vince Vaughn is, can can I give you no, homework? Sure, sure, you can give me homework. Fine. Okay, can you go watch Wedding Crashers? Sure. Okay, sure, I will. Thank I you. I mean, after I like study for my history test, Dude. then like I guess I'll give you a pass. Don't study okay, for a history test you. and watch. I'll tell Wedding Crashers. my history teacher like if you're watching, like yeah, come on, Candace is like 
said don't study exactly watch wedding crashers but now we got to go into this because this this has to be a hot take if you can compare yourself to a female soccer player like your playing style who would you choose somebody extremely feisty i mean sydney larue is kind of i think her style of like making fun of her kids but Mm -hmm. still being a mom but like your kids i think the biggest thing that i relate with sydney is is like making fun of our kids Mm -hmm. because they really do not give who cares about like who, their who we are. are? Yeah, they don't care for sure. Like my for mo- sure. my my daughter is just like hold this bag. Yeah, like, you know. Yeah, like mm-hmm. you know, she was the one that um, I remember at Staples. She was like three, and I was shooting a free throw, and I looked over at her. I missed the free throw, and she's like, "Boo!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's my kid. Uh-huh. You know, she doesn't care. Yeah, to me, that's like Draymond's son, who like literally. I remember there was one thing where like Clay was DJ. pissed and like walks on the bench. And DJ, like, throws Clay a towel, and Clay's like, mm, okay. Like, he does not understand who yep. his dad is. Yep. But. Or it's also, like— um, Cannon. Yes, Cannon's the When cutest, he said was, Clay Thompson's entire name, it melted my entire heart. Did you cute. see that? When oh, they were walking oh, I thought in, they even were like, when I did that, I was no, like— No, when, oh, when, when Cannon yes, said Cannon it. Yes, Cannon said it. Like, I know after Clay's big game, that was yeah, so cute. Said, I know that was Hello, wonderful. Clay Thompson. And I know, it was that just, was like, so the cutest. Cute. Cannon is so cute. Because it's just, like, your dad works with him. All of Seth's kids are, like— so good at being like they always like Riley especially like they're so good at unintentionally mm-hmm. going viral which I is love impressive it. I love it it's also like um North and Chicago West their TikToks mm-hmm. are like they have absolutely no care or clue in the world who their parents are and like it's so funny to watch to watch their TikToks I love it though okay so this next segment is called Mugsy or Manute so okay. let's just like think about that Manute Bowl yep Tallest NBA player ever, Muggsy Bogues, one of the shortest NBA players ever. We're on the Washington Bullets together. Like that's that's crazy. That's very, very different. Two very, very different things, right? I just need to like put that visual into all of your minds. Just like think about that. Also, like I don't want to flex, but Muggsy Bogues once posted me on his Instagram. It's fine. Not flexing. It was a flex, but it's it's fine. I, it's I'm, okay. You can yeah, flex. It's cool. I'm just it's cool. Flex. When I was like eight, like. No eight-year-olds are as cool as that. That's really cool. Yeah. If you want to post me, like, I, I would get that too. Like, that would be even cooler. And then I could use it as my new flex. No, just saying, you, like, you flex with I Muggsy. I'm the not Muggsy. Gonna... Okay, okay. Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> so we're going to go into Muggsy or Manute. But I need you to be like, quick. We just okay. need to like, get at this. Okay. Like, really tall, really short. Okay? Got you. Last shot. MJ or Kobe? MJ. Okay. Oh, okay. That was this really like hard. But MJ. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, last shot. Sue Bird or Diana Taurasi? Diana. Strong. Okay. Ooh. Cheryl and Reggie Mid- Miller or you and your brother? Me and my brother. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Oh Don't my God. Don't tell Reggie you know, that It would be so though. cool if that like happened. Yeah. But like we were 20 years too late. Okay. But like. <laughs> okay. Well with like AI now. Like what if they like created like the like AI versions of you. Okay. Or you could just play it in like 2K. I would 2K Let's it. just 2K. I mean for the that. sake of like. Achilles. And yes, for the sake of everyone's health, like let's just 2K it. Okay. Knees and I'd stuff. I'd love to put that together. I can like call it maybe. Let's do that. Okay, great. That would work. Yes, it would. It would. Lakers or Clippers? Lakers. Mm. They have more do chips. Fe- do you feel like when you were on the Sparks, did you feel a connection to the, to the Lakers or to the Clippers? To the like Lakers that, for to sure. Lakers. That's what I yeah. think. I mean, the colors. I mean, the color scheme go together. plus like the championships yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No shade, but a lot of shade. Nike or Adidas? Adidas. Strong. Yeah. Okay. Three straights all my life. There was I was looking and there's, and there's, there's not, not but it there is. It's just on the other it's side. Right, okay. It looks, yeah, it's over here. Yeah. It's I, right I understood what you were trying yeah, to do. Yeah, I was really trying work, to. And then I looked down and I was like, oops, not. Yeah. It, it could have been a point. moment, but. Oh, okay, but it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sleeping in my shirt if I had it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay. You should have come prepared. I should have. I should have. Yeah, that's my homework for you. Next time you're on an interview, wear Adidas. Yeah, wear Adidas. And Adidas, you can, like, pay me if, like, I don't know, if, like, Rise and Adidas stock goes up. Like, I'll take a cut of that for sure. Okay, Gatorade or Powerade? Gatorade. Yeah, Powerade's nasty. It's, like, the same thing, but it's just, like, off-brand. I'm not really a fan. Yeah, I've never really drank Powerade yeah. before. At, like, UCLA soccer camp, the rowback. I don't know why I just brought up UCLA soccer camp. They, they UCLA is, like, sponsored by Powerade. And I was never, like, a fan. They, like, made us drink that. And it's like, mm. Yeah, I don't like the people that make the Powerade, Powerade and the Gatorade. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 
True, true. I don't understand why you don't like them, but I'm just going to pretend like I do. Yeah, because it's like the people that make it never make it right. Oh, oh, you you mean like the mix? I thought you meant like like the actual like CEO parade. And I was like, oh, I didn't know this was like that. No, I just Um, mean the people people that literally come in and mix it. They put in too much water or too much powder. sometimes it's like too, yeah, Yes, no, I can totally relate to that. Yeah. Yeah, So I'm like bottled. Yes, yes, no, but for sure. Instagram or TikTok? Instagram. I'm never really on TikTok. Sorry. I think me and your daughter can agree. TikTok. Sure. TikTok's where it's at. She doesn't have an Instagram, so it's only TikTok. You know, I was gonna I was gonna let you know that I am very I persuaded my parents to like give me Snapchat and Instagram in like seventh grade. And like if your daughter wants the slideshow template I used, I don't know if it's gonna benefit you, but it's probably gonna benefit her. I can send it her way if that's helpful. No, thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna do it anyway, but you're welcome. It's it's good. You're gonna be persuaded for sure. I cannot. Out on the town or Netflix and chill? Netflix and chill. I like am not a – I'm a homebody. Mm -hmm. I love watching documentaries. I love watching movies. I love being at home on my couch. Have you watched Ginny and Georgia? No. Mm. It's fine. I like like Ginny and Georgia a lot. See, I'm like the watcher – It's like TV show. Maybe like not your – it's sort of like – So how do you know what my my vibe is? Because of the other shows you were telling me about earlier, even though I didn't know what they were. But that was when I was like 15. You're judging me based on my TV shows when I was 15? Are you saying being 15 isn't important? And no, you don't I'm have saying it's important, skills and but you're judging 15? me off of my television watching from 20 years ago. I don't know. I feel like ago. when I'm – won't say your age. You're welcome. 20 years ago. It's okay. 20 years ago. Okay. When I am that age or at that stage in my life, um, I, feel like, I feel like I'm still going to have similar tastes. Yes. I have similar tastes, but you still but broaden it's different. Okay. your – Just okay. like your palate. Like you're not going to eat the same food at 15 that you do when you're 30. I have a pretty advanced palate. What's your favorite food? My favorite food? That's a hard question. I like everything. Is it? Okay. It's like not. I just don't eat pork. Okay. I like – I really like sushi. So I've same. gotten into like amakase mm, style, mm-hmm. you know, sushi. Um, I'm a spicy tuna crispy rice person. See, I'm like – Roll like I don't do the but maybe rolls. that's where my palate will change. Thank you for that. Like now I've gone into like science a little bit because like spicy tuna crispy rice is more like kid like, and then as I get, get older, older I get like more you're mature, not doing which a will be hard for me to get more mature because like I'm not mature. Listen, but as I grow up, listen, I yeah, you will yeah maybe I'll like, start to like like even the way you like your steak right. You start off liking like it the, like, like medium, pieces. and then you go to like medium rare, and then you know I still am. Sc- when I order steak, I'll still turn to my mom and I'll be like, mommy, what kind of steak do I like? Even though I know it's medium, I don't know why I'm so scared that I'm going to say the wrong thing. It's a fear. There you go. And yeah. then you sure. won't have to do that in 20 years. You won't turn to your mom and be like, what? You I know? may. Maybe. That's like my one area where I'm like not confident ordering steak. Um, <laughs> sweet or salty? Sweet. I have a sweet tooth. Yeah, yeah. Same. Pazookis all day. What's that? Oh my gosh. It's a cookie with ice cream and chocolate on it. And oh. it's the most amazing. I have it every Saturday night. Mm. is a pozuki and sometimes on Monday and sometimes and Tuesday. And sometimes every day. And sometimes mm. Thursday. New York or LA? LA. 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 All LA. Day. LA. West Side. LA. Yeah. Uh, Ronaldo or Messi? I like Messi. I like Messi's vibe. And he's a winner, like you. No offense to Ronaldo, but just saying. <laughs> Sam Kerr or Alex Morgan? Alex Morgan. Yeah. Th- th- that's, that's the yeah, only right I like answer. Alex Morgan. When you were saying you're Mia Hamm. It's my option yeah, for me. Yeah, for sure. Now, final question. This is tough. Me, you, or Doris Burke? Ooh. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I think we know the answer. It's fine. We, we don't have, you don't have to say it out loud, but you can just hint to it. Like, I don't know if you want to point at me or something, like, just to, like, <laughs> avoid controversy, but it's me. I think so. <laughs> Yo, you're hilarious. I know. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway. Thanks for listening and make sure you check out the video on my YouTube channel and see some of the fun behind the scenes things we did with Candace by following Sloan Knows on Instagram and TikTok. Sloan has me, by the way. From Jam Street Media. We uh, listen, I'm gonna send I'm gonna send them a list of shows that you are to watch. Okay. That is your homework. Okay. okay. Well, I was gonna say I watch um I watched like the new Gossip Girl reboot. That's like good. No, that's not like a classic.